Welcome everyone to a gameplay overview or even like a quick impressions video on Cold Waters which was just recently released um, at the time this video is being recorded. Um, this is done by Killerfish Games who's most recently well known for making Atlantic Fleet which is a really good World War II turn-based fleet combat simulator. Um, Cold Waters is a little bit forward in time. We now have the Cold War and this is Soviet bloc versus NATO. So basically Russia versus the United States if the Cold War actually became a shooting war. Um, another difference from a pure fleet combat simulator is that this is a submarine simulation game. And I'm going to throw the term submarine sim out there, but it, it's kind of arcadey, so you might call it something else. I mean, it's still at, at its core simulating being a, a submarine captain. So um, what else do I want to say? I, I think that you can make draw comparisons of with this game to Silent Hunter, but that's the one thing I would say is that it's a little bit more um, arcadey. Uh, there's not, uh, there's some things I'll talk about, like you can't really do the whole stealthy approach that we see in the Hunt for the Red October. Um, you don't really actually get into an, an enemy sub submarine's baffles very often, just the, the part to their stern. There's not that whole cat and mouse game. It's much more uh, almost like a fighter pilot type thing where you're diving left and right and changing depth rapidly. So this makes it more exciting, hence arcadey, but um, some people who are more interested in a hardcore simulation might be a little disappointed by this. I think that overall, like if I was to give my initial impression of the game, it's it's really good. Um, it has, it once you get used to the, the pacing that the game wants you to um, apply, you, because uh, yeah, I first was treating this much more like Silent Hunter, taking everything slow. Uh, once I got into more of this, okay, let's treat this as like a fighter pilot duel, <laughs> then uh, the game plays even better, because then you understand what the game wants you to do. Okay, so let's get into this uh, one example of the tactical combat. I'll just choose the first mission here, a duel. We'll be choosing the best of the best that NATO has to offer, the Americans really, at this point, which is the Los Angeles class, nuclear attack submarine. Um, this is the pinnacle of what the United States offers in this game. So we don't actually get to the Sea Wolf class, which is the next one, which was like extremely quiet. But uh, this is like a very good ship. We are technically advantaged in passive sonar and in running quiet, but our active sonar actually is a little bit behind the Russians. And this in introduces like an interesting mechanic with um, doctrines. And by the way, right now we can only play as NATO submarines, but um, Killerfish has announced that they will be introducing for free the Russian submarines as well, including a Russian campaign. Now the main way you're going to play this is not these single missions, um, but this will be a good example of what combat is like. So we'll just accept our Los Angeles command very briefly for a single mission, and we'll jump into a single mission, a single tactical mission. Let's see. Important to kind of pay attention to these things. The first few times I ignored them, and then uh, I realized it's kind of good to know your situation before before heading in. So we won't have much. Uh, this game does have pretty good simulation of actual submarine mechanics, like they have the thermal layer, which did also exist, I guess, in Silent Hunter, but um, it was hard to determine whether it's being used or not. <laughs> this game actually just directly tells you, okay, the thermal climb is at this layer and um, if there's a surface duct, all these things, it gives you the intensity, how effective it's gonna be. So let's just look, our depth is gonna be, okay, fair, fairly deep, um, about halfway to our maximum, which is a thousand. Um, and we are gonna wanna do hard to starboard to put ourselves on the bearing. Okay, so let's get into the battle then. So here's what the tactical battle looks like. Um, you will be third person. So this is one of the first reasons why I consider this a little more arcadey. Okay, let's run silent and do a hard turn to starboard. As I mentioned, we'll get our bearing to about four or whatever it was. Our mini map is gonna show us the contacts. And let's, the first thing we wanna do is actually identify what kind of contact we have. So this is a nice little fun mini game we can do right at the beginning. You can use the keys. Okay, it looks like I've already identified it. It's a Delta three. That doesn't make sense. Okay, this one's a little bit off. I'm, I actually have to put my nose right up to my monitor if it sounds different. This one's slightly off, so we need that. There, okay, now we moved over. 
No, this one's now off, so we need to find... Okay. Okay, this is great. We're up against a Sierra class, which is the best of what... Um, the, the best of what the Russians have to offer. So this is the peak NATO versus the peak um, Soviet bloc. Perfect little battle for us. They're already pinging us. This is not good. I would say, I, I, okay, I, I'd like to pay attention to the signature stuff and all that a little bit longer, but we don't have time because this is life or death is already uh, swinging wildly towards the death the longer we wait before firing. And that's the first thing I want to mention about the actual combat. This game really rewards fire early, fire often. So that is what we want to do immediately. Let's get a little bit lower thermocline. Oh, they're above. Okay, so we need to set our torpedoes to go above. And I think we just fire. Actually, we want to raise because we'll be more in the shadow of this, their sensors the higher we get. And since we already know where they are, no point in delaying. I think, though, that we they're so close, we're just going to fire. So let's just go fire. And we'll launch two torpedoes because it's a Sierra class and we don't want to die. <laughs> so this is um this is what I wanted to make the comparison. This is how I wanted to make the comparison between like the cat and mouse game that I associated always with the submarine combat with the, how it actually is. Um, so the fire early, fire often based on my like 10 hours of gameplay or so in this is much like wildly more successful than actually stalking your prey quietly and all that. And we can see that there's two things I will note about launching your torpedoes. Very, oh god. Okay, um, we have a enemy fish in the water. And I can demonstrate for you how to avoid getting killed if I can avoid getting killed here. Um, yeah, that is, uh, we're gonna do a crash dive here. Hopefully our wires are gonna break. That's fine. Always turn into the torpedoes, and this is where the fighter pilot type mechanics comes in. We're actually better off just continually diving and maneuvering, not running silent, basically. <laughs> so hopefully our missiles find their target. We'll just take a brief look. They're headed that way. Hopefully they find their target, like I said. We're gonna do a huge crash dive here to try to get out of the path of this torpedo, which I've already lost. Is it above us? Um, it is practically above us. Okay, let's level out. I don't see it. There it is. So I think we need to keep turning. We want to stay exactly underneath it, which means it'll be very difficult for her to detect. And I think we're low enough, though, that we're going to be okay. We just formed a knuckle, which is actually not what I wanted to do. Knuckle being just a, if you whip your submarine around very quickly, you can actually like create a little whiplash motion in the ocean, uh, which actually can distort where sound, um, the sound waves, which makes them appear like they're coming from a different direction than they actually are. So it's a pretty useful tactic for any submarine commander. Um, how you do that is just go flank speed and then change your rudder very quickly, dramatically to um, one full on one side or the other. How are our torpedoes doing? We can only only look by hitting F3 and looking underwater. They're both on their way. Where's the enemy contact though? She last, we, we lost her. Oh, uh, she created a knuckle. So she is, she's trying to do a little bit of battlefield maneuvering herself. We're practically below safe limits. So I'm just gonna keep, uh, don't form a knuckle. Okay, we've reestablished contact. Let's see what's going on. No. Still don't know much about what's going on. Oh, but our torpedoes have turned, and they would only turn if they've actually identified a target. Oh, we've got a hit. We've got a hit. Um, I don't know much more than that, other than this one appears to be appears to be trying to target somebody. And we're still spinning in circles over there. Um, yep, he's turning again, so it looks like he's on target. We're doing passive detection. You can also do, if you want... Uh, active sensors, but usually the Russian submarines, you would use active, I'm sure, if you were playing as the Russians, but uh, the Russian ships, even the Sierra is loud enough for our acoustic homing torpedoes to locate them. Uh, we've lost them because we're spinning in circles. <laughs> okay, the ship is back up. Oh, saw something. Is that them launching another? It was! Oh god, they're launching another torpedo at us. So, we need to quickly get out of the way. And, probably... Let's see. 
Uh, we got a hit. It looks like we got a hit. There it is. We've sunk the Sierra class. All that's left for us to do now is survive our own little run brush with death. So, zoom in. And here we go. Off we, off we go. I don't know if their torpedo can track us if they aren't alive anymore. I think they can. It's independent fire control. So, there it was. That was a very... <laughs> That was a crazy... Oh god, there it is. So will it track us? It is. So there's just no questions about it, it's tracking us. Alright, so this is um, another thing you can do is... Uh, I've already shown you how to dive and turn. If you have an enemy torpedo coming at you from this distance, like we see this one has a ways to go to catch up to us, what I recommend doing if you have the deep enough water, which we do in this case, is just trying to run away. Flank speed, full on, because these do have a limited range, and what I can do is actually, I'm going to, oh god, that is not nearly as far as I thought, that is closing in pretty quickly, so I was going to use F9, which is time compression, to let it catch up, and then what we're going to do is, hopefully this works, I'm going to do a very complicated maneuver here, this is all part of the, the fun of the, the dogfight type aerial maneuvering, much less of the cat and mouse games, as I said, so... We're going to wait for it to get close. We're going to deploy a noisemaker, which is shift D. Then we're going to make an erratic turn. This um, torpedo almost surely is going to make a, a, a move around move, which I'll try to demonstrate if the game lets me. It's going to move either right or left around our noisemaker. And this thing is getting darn close. I think it's time to go. Okay, here we go. I'll just demonstrate, to you, demonstrate for you which way is it going, which way is it going, left or right. Oh, shoot, it's going neither. Okay. We don't want to take the hit right in our propulsion. Alright, we're forming a knuckle. We're blowing ballast. Here we go. We've confused it. Up we go. Get out of the range. Get out of the range. Turn into it. Get up. Get out of the water. Now, I've blown ballast here because I know there's no other... Um, I know that there's no other ships in the area. Not normally a good idea, and you can see our we're crazy. So let's just uh, keep from breaching, because I don't know what'll happen if we breach. Could be, and let's go silent running with our planes full down, so we actually keep from breaching. Because we we right now we've blown our ballast, so we're um, you know ballast is at sixty. We can't change that. And have we actually lost the torpedo contact? It is now circling. We will be circling above it. Is it detecting us? It does not appear. So they have a very wide arc for their um, active sensor v horizontally, but vertically, not so much. Not so much. So we, I think we've actually avoided uh, imminent death by doing a, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that was a, a proper maneuver at all, but it, it seemed to work. And actually, it wasn't the noisemaker which helped us. It was that knuckle which ultimately did it for us. Um, so I talked about how knuckles are maybe not that effective, but that one ended up being quite effective for us, and we'll be happy to rest on the surface. So there we go, wild engagement with the best, now it's random what enemy submarine you get, so, what? Contact Sierra bearing 23, contact reestablished, it's sunk, right? Don't tell me that, I get very, very nervous. All right, now this is never a place you wanna be if you're a submarine. We will raise all of our observation equipment, radar, um, let's see, we're not getting any detection from ESM. This just detects whether we're receiving enemy radar signals, and we are not. So that's what we'd expect, because this is just a duel. It's a one-on-one -on -one engagement. Um, where is this torpedo? It's... Okay, yeah, their ship is definitely sinking. It's at the bottom. It's dead. And that torpedo has, I guess, already run out. So that's it. That's our tactical battle. That was wild, fast, crazy, but I think a great demonstration of what combat... Uh, that was actually a fantastic demonstration of a combat, like a, one of the more exciting ones that I've uh, I've actually played. So that's what you get in Cold Waters, is that kind of chaotic, um, almost twitchy type um, gameplay. So it's um, a lot of fast maneuvering, a lot of firing of torpedoes rapidly, and it's a blast. Um, now there's there are different ways you can tr try to tweak... 
um, make things a little bit more favorable for cat and mouse. I think you can change things here to get that to work. I haven't done it, but I have to say that I just have had no success with that. In fact, the first probably six hours I played this game, I was going for cat and mouse. My idea was take Silent Hunter, which is, <clears throat> you know, a very pure simulation game, and do that in cold waters. And what I found is it's actually better to maybe be a little bit more aggressive. So fire torpedoes, you know, even if you don't have a good, perfect solution. Um, warships, by the way, very, very strong, extremely difficult to deal with. So um, good luck if you're dealing with warships. I would say that most of the time now I've played long enough that I'm, I'm getting a good feel for how to survive and you know how to not bite off more than you can chew most of the time i just avoid combat with warships altogether it's it's not a good situation i don't know if that's just um realistic or if it's something that killer fish might consider patching um, to make them a little bit less devastating but um i would say that if we if i get into a shooting battle with warships i have like a maybe a 33 percent chance of surviving i would say just based on my actual experience i probably I've done six engagements with warships, and maybe only two of those I survived. So, uh, yeah. So that's it gives you probably a good impression of the tactical combat. Let's talk about the other stuff. One of the things that I will mention is they have a pretty extensive manual and tutorial, and the tutorials you can go through, but it is missing a few things. First of all, if you're... I'm, I know that this is just, you know, common to say, but I do recommend you actually read through all this. It's very useful. And uh, unfortunately, it doesn't include some very important key things, like, did you know you cannot launch your torpedoes at any depth? It doesn't say anything about this. It's certainly something a submarine commander, excuse me, would know about. But uh, if you launch your torpedoes at like 800, over 800, so at 900 or 1,000 feet under, which is within your safe operating depth, your torpedoes will blow up immediately, destroying the tube they were launched from, probably revealing your position. And I mean, all these things are really bad, but there's no mention of it, even though it happens, from what I can tell, 100% of the time. Um, and it's probably common knowledge. Another thing is you cannot launch your torpedoes going too fast. So I, I don't, I mean, I'm not even sure if that's exactly correct or if I just got unlucky with launching too fast and the, tu and the um, torpedoes not launching, the tubes being jammed. And if that happens, most of the time you'll be playing the career mode. I guess we can go ahead and... Is there anything else I want to showcase here? We have the map, tab to get in and out of that, mini map. Shift, backslash, kind of an awkward um, hotkey, which you can change, but I haven't, uh, is to center the map on your submarine, which is I definitely recommend. I don't recommend dragging this around. I re recommend shift, backslash, together to make it follow your submarine wherever you go, because that's usually the more interesting thing. And for some reason, it doesn't stay locked. Like, I would prefer shift backslash to not just follow it, but continue to follow it until I, like, unlocked it with shift backslash again. Anyway, um, let's see. What else do I want to talk about on the actual tactical map? You have... Uh, th this is where the simulation comes in. You have your, like, thermocline weak duct on the top, weak layer on the bottom. So you can have sound bouncing on the top layer. Um, it's not as easy for it to penetrate the, the lower la layer, even though this is very weak, so that, that effect would almost be non-existent. It's cool that they have all these things, and the ambient noise, which pay, which um, plays itself out as, you know, you, you saw if we go really fast, um, we'll cavitate pretty quickly here. Let's also um, drop down a little bit. Uh, yeah, so you'll see that the noise plays itself out as these vertical bars, which distort the lines you're actually hearing. So, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see what else we have. Oh, okay, I'm going too fast. If you're going too fast, you will damage your stuff. Let's just raise above again. All right, let's go slower. So I, it doesn't matter. I, this is irrelevant anyway. I'm not planning to go back to port or anything. So I guess I'm just going to quit out of here. You can choose to load different torpedoes. I always recommend loading one Moss, which is a mobile um, submarine something. Um, it basically acts, it's a torpedo which generates noise equivalent to the sound of your submarine. So it acts kind of like as a decoy, a decoy submarine. And okay, let's just leave combat. So the few, there's a couple of things like the launching torpedoes 
at a, too high a speed or too low of a depth, which are not covered by the manual. And I, I don't, I don't like that. Another thing I don't like is that they have this. Okay, what I do like is their unit reference thing uh, manual is awesome. It has all the submarines that are in the game, including like their statistics and a nice little blurb notes about them. I read through this just for fun. I mean, it, it's like pretty interesting stuff to know all the different submarines, all the different um, fleet ships that you'll be up against. And again, <laughs> my recommendation is stay the heck away from anything fleet um, surface. Uh, but the problem is you can't access this in game. So in the tactical battles, you can't actually access the unit reference, which is really a problem I feel because it's most mo the most important thing is okay you get this you let's say let me go back real fast let's say you identify an Udaloy, a Riga, you know one of these two is much more devastating for your submarine and your submarine captain would surely know this, but I don't know that because those are just words to me I'm not that familiar with all the Cold War era um, Russian fleet ships, so if it gives me a let's say a Rapucha class ship. I don't know that that's just a landing ship and probably doesn't have great anti-submarine warfare. Then also if they gave me like a, a Krivak, if they give me a Krivak and, um, you know, something else, this is a horrible ship for me to encounter. It has fantastic anti-submarine anti capabilities, but I wouldn't know that. So it would be extremely useful for Killerfish to include the ability to access unit reference, which is a fantastic manual, but just to be able to access it in actual tactical combat. Now, the campaign is what you'll be playing, for sure. It's definitely the way to play this game. You can choose between the early or the late. Don't play the early, I would say. And just flat out, I this is the first thing I did for the first like four or five hours, again, when I was still learning how to play the game still, but I was doing uh, the early campaign. And you the it's not difficult because your submarines are worse. Um, t I think the gap in performance between the American and Russian subs in the early campaign is actually greater, which means the this early sturgeon I think is much better than any of the um, contemporary Russian submarines compared to the Los Angeles and the Sierra, which are I think more or less evenly matched. But the problem is your torpedoes. Your torpedoes are actually slower than most um, submarines at flank speed. Which means that, and this happened to me like four or five times before I got so frustrated I stopped playing. You launch torpedoes. Again, that doesn't allow you to play the cat and mouse game to get into the baffles to launch a torpedo into their blind side. You can't do that because the game just doesn't play that way. Um, or at least I haven't found that it plays that way. So you then end up firing torpedoes, which the enemy detects, and then they just run flank speed away from them and you can never hit them. Whereas you, on the other hand, can get hit by torpedoes, so it's just a, an exercise in frustration and futility. So therefore, I recommend you play the North Atlantic camp, uh, 1984 campaign. Let's just pretend to start one real fast. Let's just call this a uh, test, and testudo is fine, but Tortuga power. Uh, I actually have a campaign going right now, <clears throat> but we'll just uh, actually let's call this test man, uh, just because so I know that to delete this later. Now, I will say, if you're interested in seeing more um, gameplay on this, I'm going to do a full campaign series on it. But I wanted to get this video out there quickly. Now, the campaign, I'm going to start immediately. So hopefully, even the video will be up maybe at the same time as this gameplay overview goes up, or maybe a day later. So stay tuned for that if you're interested in seeing more detailed campaign action. Uh, but just to show you what the campaign map looks like, we'll just jump into something real fast. What you've seen from the tactical combat is basically the full game. Um, the campaign, and I'm going to skip through the, the stuff here, the story buildup. Um, the campaign is just a series of tactical battles like the one we just played strung together. So they give you some objective. We just accept it. I don't even know what it is. Um, and we move around with left click at flank speed or right click at patrol speed basically flank speed until you get near something and then patrol speed to you know not be surprised and you go and you engage um, any kind of red submarine icon we we can find here so stay away from the satellites um, eventually our somebody will be detected I I hope um, and then, so you just wander the map okay so we can go and we can engage this submarine 
like that. So you just move close to it. I'm not actually going to fight this battle, we'll just quit out right away. So um, this gives you an idea of what the campaign's like though. And like I said, if you're interested in seeing more of that, you can just um, uh, stay tuned for some content on my channel. Okay, but that's it. That's really all I wanted to say about Cold Waters. I think that that gives you a good impression of what this game is all about. It's a, it's a really good game for Cold War, which I feel like is a strangely neglected period of warfare. You know, there's a, uh, maybe because war never came to, I mean, we never actually had a, a firing war. Maybe that's why it's neglected, but, um, I mean, it's not totally neglected, but I just feel like it's such an interesting, well-balanced period to, to have a war in that a World War II gets so many games that why not have a few more on the Cold War? But, um, that's going to do it for this gameplay overview. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And like I said, if you're interested in seeing the campaign, that'll be very soon forthcoming. So thanks for watching, and until whatever video you watch next, take care.